I'm a hunter, not a cyclist or a bicycle expert, but I'm always looking for something that's gonna make it a little bit easier for me getting in and out of the woods or something that might just make me more successful. So if you're interested in what this e-bike thing's all about, this video is for you. In this video, I'm gonna explain why a hunter might be interested in an e-bike. I'm gonna give you my honest review of the Quiet Cat Ranger 1000 watt model, including an overview of features and specifications, an interview with a hunter who has extensive experience using these in the field, and my personal experience based on a demo of this unit. Ah! Okay, so what? Why should a hunter consider kicking the tires on an e-bike? Turns out there are a couple of reasons. You know, we prioritize hunting with stealth. And in theory, an e-bike means you could go farther, faster than walking in alone. And it means reducing scent. You aren't putting boots on the ground or getting yourself as hot and sweaty walking to your stand. And with an e-bike, you're not making noise like you would be with an ATV or putting exhaust into the air. Because an e-bike has a much lower profile than a side-by-side -side or an ATV, you can ride much closer to your stand and still conceal the bike. Okay, so you tell me I can do something to get deeper into the woods faster and control my scent? I'm not sold yet, but you got my attention. Let me give this thing a test drive and see how it goes. I tested this Quiet Cat in West Texas, which is great because I wanted to see how it would perform on a variety of terrain. I was most interested in evaluating performance and comfort. It had been a while since I was on any type of bike, but the Quiet Cat was incredibly easy to operate and very comfortable to drive, even in rough areas. This was my first experience with a fat tire bike, and the combination of the tires, front fork suspension, heavy weight of the bike, and optional flexible seat seemed to soak up the bumps, and there were a lot of bumps. I put the bike through its paces over a variety of terrain, on and off road just like I would when hunting. It was incredibly stable even off road. I was very impressed by how it handled hills and how much ground I could cover with very little effort, and it was quiet. I can't recall any groans or squeaks. It seemed to be very well made. But one thought kept nagging me. What happens if you're successful? You're miles back in the woods with a bike and you bag a nice one. How do you get your harvest out? Quiet Cat thought of that too. No, this isn't a rickshaw, though we did have a lot of fun with it. This is terrifying. <laughs> I lost control about a mile ago. <laughs> Quiet Cat offers a very handy game trailer. It attaches with ease, measures 47 by 18 inches, and has an adjustable tilting bed. Getting your bike to your land is a snap with the optional compact bike trailer. Very easy to load and unload and much smaller to store than a large trailer like you'd need for a side-by-side. -side. Despite weighing in at close to 70 pounds, unloading was relatively easy as well. And then your trailer folds up right out of the way so you can still lower the tailgate of your truck. Let's take a look at the most relevant features and specifications for a hunter. The Ranger comes in both a 750 and a 1000 watt model. We tested the 1000. The battery that it comes with has almost 13 amp hours built in. The manufacturer states that'll get you between 19 and 38 miles worth of range. That's already incredibly broad, but it's subject to a whole bunch of conditions. What kind of weight you've got on the bike, whether you're towing anything, how fast you're driving, the type of terrain, a ton of other stuff. I know from our experience with an electric side-by-side -side that capacity and range is king. You can also get an additional battery to extend the capacity up over 17 amp hours. I would kind of recommend doing that because you do not want to get out there and get stranded. And I would have to imagine in normal hunting situations, you're probably going to get a lot less than a manufacturer stated range. Range and capacity would be two of the main considerations when you're debating going electric versus something powered with gas, like a side-by-side. -side. So with the amount of warning that you need before you're going to go hunting. You're not going to throw one of these in the back of the car and just head off down the road. You're going to need at least six to eight hours with the standard or the solar charger in order to charge the battery, but there is a rapid charger available that'll charge within three to six hours. You're still probably not going on no notice. And you might need the ability to recharge overnight when you're in camp. The stock unit weighs about 65 pounds, so keep that in mind. It's a lot heavier than your normal 10 speed, so you're not going to pick it up really easily and just sling it into the bed of your truck. It's not too bad, though. The manufacturer stated weight capacity is 325 pounds. Keep in mind, the more that you're towing, the harder that motor's working, it's gonna use more power, affect your range. It's got a hub drive, so it's applying power directly to the rear wheels. The suspension has coils in the front with 100 millimeters of travel. It's what they call a hardtail, so there's no suspension on the rear. You can get an aftermarket add-on seat that's got some springs in it to really improve your ride. And I would really recommend that you do, especially if you're on rough terrain. The tires are 26 inches by four and a half wide. Those gave me a lot of comfort and stability as 
I was driving, you can reduce the air pressure in the tires to improve your ride depending on the terrain. Now I'm sure a bunch of you are just waiting for me to cut to how fast can it go? And I know you're going to be disappointed because I'm about to tell you it depends. It depends on a heck of a lot, just like the range. The 750 watt model is capped at 20 miles an hour. I'm sure there are a lot of reasons for that, legality and restrictions in certain areas. The 1000 watt model that we tested is unrestricted and it went as fast as I would want it to go, especially in a hunting situation with all my gear on it. I got this thing up to about 30 miles an hour and didn't want to go anymore, but I'm sure it could. The mechanical gears are a Shimano 7 speed. There are five adjustable modes for the motor itself that you can control through the LCD screen that'll change things like whether you're in pedal assist mode, straight throttle to the wheels, and a number of other options. I found that the combination of the mechanical gears plus all the adjustments that I can make to the motor gave me all the versatility that I needed for any type of terrain. As you might have guessed, these things are not cheap. The base package comes in at almost $3,800 for this Ranger 1000 plus tax shipping prep and all the particulars. As I tested it with some additional options, it was almost $4,200. From looking at the Quiet Cat website, it looks like they do offer financing options and sort of a try before you buy period, so make sure you check into whatever promotions they have going on. Let's hear from a very experienced hunter who owns a Quiet Cat Ranger 1000 and has extensive experience using e-bikes in the field. We'll hear from Ryan from The Way We Hunt. If you don't know their channel, you better get familiar. Entertaining and informative content for hunters, head over there and check them out. All right, let's get back to the bike. Rather than go kind of from nose to tail, why don't you start with, I mean, what are your favorites or likes or dislikes about the, about the unit? Okay, so probably my biggest like, obviously it's an electric bike, right? So it's an assisted bike. It, it helps you get around, right? So you're not just pedaling on your own and, and, and just tiring yourself out. I underestimated how powerful it was. Mm. I mean, this thing will literally drag three, 400 pounds. I think it's weight rated to, they say 300 to 350 pounds. Today, I put 430 pounds on it. Me and Mr. Spencer on camera over here. Uh, 21 miles an hour through the dirt off-road. Yeah. And it did not struggle at all. So, I mean, the weight's obviously gonna affect the distance. Sure. Um, and with that thousand watts, I mean, what kind of range have you, have you seen out of this just on, in typical use? Right at 21 miles. You can buy an extra battery though, keep it in your bag, and you just double your range. So if you're out on that big western hunt, you need to go 30 miles back in on a logging trail or something, you're able to do that without fear of getting stuck back there. Really, really good at going up very steep terrain. I, I, that's what surprised me the most. Um, there's some hills out here, as you guys have seen, that are so steep, and this thing just sucks you right up, no problem. Yeah, I could tell that. I liked it a lot, too, just yeah. driving it on the roads, on open terrain, or even off-road, too. You could tell how strong it was, even when I drove it right into that thorn bush the other day, too, so. Ah! Oh, yeah. It could be a little touchy. <laughs> I wish the power would come on softer, because mm -hmm. it comes on right now. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the middle of the turn and you start to you have a little pedal assist, it, it kicks in right when you're in the middle of a turn, it can surprise you a little bit, so that's yep. something you just have to get used to. Yep. Uh, other than that, it was just a learning curve. So I see we got a, a gun rack up here. I mean, have you hauled um, any of your rifles up here, and how does this how does this do? I have, so I took it deer hunting two or three times this year. I was worried that it was gonna throw the steering off, and it didn't at all. No, um, no uh, effects to the center of gravity? None whatsoever. Yeah. Um, and I was going down a hill, a uh, fairly steep hill at about 20 miles an hour mm -hmm. uh, going down to our property and had no issues at all. Yeah. Another concern I had as far as the optics is how stable these were going to be and how much support it was going to give the weapon and the optic itself. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about losing zero in the optic, yeah. bouncing around going down hills, yeah. none whatsoever. Yeah. Between this and the actual suspension that it has on the front end, yeah, it really soaked up all those bumps. So yeah, that's that was one thing that I noticed too. I noticed my body was kind of shaking all over the place, but I was still really comfortable riding the bike when I was going off road. Yeah, and I noticed so you've got some kind of you've got a special seat on here that kind of helps to absorb some of that, right? Yeah. So this this does not come stock on the Ranger. Quiet Cat does sell it on their website, and it is adjustable. So the seat post really comes out. There's an Allen wrench in the bottom. You can put more or less tension on that seat depending on the weight of the rider, mm -hmm. and it has actually quite a bit of flex to it. Since this particular model does not have rear suspension, it, it adds that to it and makes it more comfortable. From the factory, it was a little hard on the on the old hind end. Yeah. Um, but adding that, it was a game changer. I think one thing that um, folks might be interested in is just, I don't know, legality. Is it open for everybody to use this or, or something? Yeah, so different, so different states break down what, one, what, what is considered an electric bike. Well, certain states, you can't use them at all, right? Um, certain states you can use them as long as they're not above 750 watts. 
certain states you can use a thousand. The good thing about what Quiet Cat does, if you see like all these connectors up here, mm -hmm. you're able to just unplug those and you unplug the computer and it turns it into a bicycle. Is there anything that you don't like about it or you feel like it might be a drawback to going electric instead of just a normal bike? You know, the, the one thing, and it, it's a big question that people ask is how much does it cost? They're, mm -hmm. they're not the cheapest things in the world. Mm -hmm. I can understand why a lot of people would do that, but if you're, if you're thinking about making the move to something like this, you're also looking at motorcycles and you're looking at ATVs, right? Mm -hmm. So within that sphere of influence of what's gonna, what are my, my biggest bang for the buck, that's why we went with this, because I can ride this at home, I can ride it on the street, I can take it off the trails, I can throw it on the back of the, the truck. Bring it all the way to Texas. Bring so. it all the way to Texas. <laughs> well, I think I know the answer to this. I mean, balancing all that together, right? Yeah. The price versus everything that this offers you, I mean, would you recommend it? Oh, absolutely, 100%. Okay. We just got back from that Oregon bear hunt last uh, last June. I would have paid someone a lot of money to give me one of these on the side of that mountain. Yeah. Uh, this would have saved my bacon. I bet. Um, made life a lot easier. So yeah, I highly recommend it. Good deal. Excellent. Well, thank you for walking us through it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. That's it for us, you guys. We hope you found this informative. We have a ton more content like this, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our upcoming videos. We do equipment reviews and free giveaways to reward our YouTube family all the time, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. And head on over and check out The Way We Hunt. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did. Thanks for being with us, you guys. God bless every one of you.